Yo. You want a free speed? Yeah, free speed sounds Free speed sounds good, huh? So today we're gonna be talking about free speed. It doesn't cost anything. A lot of people try to upgrade over and over again, but today we're gonna be talking about how you can add maybe two kilometers per hour or as much as five kilometers per hour for free. Wow. Do you want free speed? I want it. Let's go. Just follow us. So he's gonna film us and uh, hopefully you get to take home something from today's uh, session. The science of free speed. One of the key components of having free speed is uh, your posture. Yes, equipment helps. Yes, frames, aerodynamically shaped bicycle frames help. But you always have to remember that 85 to 90 percent of the total drag comes from your body. So one of the major techniques in having free speed is to have a small frontal area. Go as low as possible. Keep your elbows together. Keep your head low, but without sacrificing your vision. You have to be able to see maybe um, 50 to 100 meters in front of you just to anticipate traffic or any incoming danger. Keep your elbows at 90 degrees. Close your elbows to create that shielding effect and allow the air to split between your knuckles, your elbows, and let the knees act like pistons. So the more that you close that gap, it will give you absolutely two, three, four, sometimes five kilometers per hour of free speed. Now, this is not easy. You have to really practice it. And at the same time, you have to make sure that the bike fits you. After some sessions on airport road, we had a chance to really play with uh, some of our community youth. Uh, they were very nice and very accommodating, very respectful to allow Tom and I to tag along with them going to uh, NCC. And NCC, well, it's not... <laughs> It's not really for the faint of heart, especially if you don't like hills. Uh, there's a flat section going towards NCC, but as soon as you traverse this yellow bridge, then um, there are, um, I believe, five challenging climbs that uh, awaits you. The best thing about this course is, if you do your technique right and your posture right, you are guaranteed to manage the climbs in the meantime when you are drafting behind a large group of people there is an opportunity for you to uh, rest some of your major muscles if you can save as much energy as you can and let your friends do the drafting for you then that might help you extend your riding hours on the downhill, after the bridge, it's always nice to keep a very safe distance between you and the rider in front of you just to make sure that if someone breaks or there's a change of um, road texture, you're ready to uh, go to the left or go to the right. At the same time, it's also highly advised that on fast downhills, hold on to your drops. Holding on to your drops gives you a lower center of gravity and makes the bike uh, a lot more stable. Now we coast towards uh, the start of the major hills and these major hills are not so long. I was really surprised when we started measuring them. They felt like five kilometers long but in reality they were just one kilometer long, 800 meters long but uh, if you don't manage your effort then they would feel like uh, forever the boys started to ramp up the speed they knew the hills were about to start at this point we were going at 400 watts 300 watts because at three percent four percent gradient they were already flying and as soon as we hit one of the major climbs that was peaking out at 12 percent gradient this is where your posture and pedaling technique could probably save your climbing so one of the things that I always remind everyone that ride with us, the more that the climb becomes 
steeper, the more that you have to avoid swinging around from side to side. The more that you swing around from side to side, the more that you're going to lose torque. Remember, the harder the road goes, the more that you focus on keeping a very steady upper body. This is where the value of taking care of your core muscles, your abdominals, your obliques, your back muscles, your hamstrings come into play. You don't have to sprint a lot. Just manage your heart rate, low RPM, low heart rate, and then you'll be able to manage those 12% steep slopes. It's not a joke. It's really, really steep. But hey, it's not a race. Nobody paid you to go fast. Just manage the climbs. Always remember, enjoy your ride. Ride your pace. And um, if ever you had a chance to be at the top of the summit first, have the courtesy to wait for everyone who are still climbing and try to regroup on those 0 to 2% uh, grade sections of the road. And as soon as everyone uh, gets together, then you can reset and start climbing again. Remember, sometimes in climbs, this is where the disparity and technique and strength becomes amplified. Doesn't matter. The super climbers can go ahead. The uh, mediocre climbers can stay with me. And uh, we just manage our effort. We just manage our speed. Again, these are awesome opportunities to really work on your posture, your control. The way you hold the bike, the way you hold the hoods really dictates if you're going to have numb fingers, lower back pain, sore quads. And we have a flyer. Man, this guy in green, he was just flying super fast. So everyone started to attack. Everyone started to fly out. But sometimes, sometimes there is a danger that you're going to blow up in as short as 50 meters. 12% climbs are not a joke. So if you do it wrong, if you manage your effort wrong, you're going to pay for it. It doesn't even take 100 meters for you to realize that. So sometimes when you get too excited, in chasing or accelerating you'll end up flooding your legs with lactic acid spiking your heart rate and then it's game over so that's all for uh, today's climbing from here we head straight to NCC and go back home going back home is super fun we, we have a lot of sweeping downhills well everything that you climbed a while ago you can now uh, happily go downhill and um, again, one of the techniques that we wanted to share with a lot of our viewers is the more that you stay on the drops, the faster you can go, but in a very safe manner because your center of gravity will be very low and the bike will stay stable. At the same time, keep your weight at the saddle. If you can keep the weight way, way, way back at the saddle, you're guaranteed that you're not going to go over the bars just in case you have to brake so hard. So enjoy your downhills in a very safe manner. Regulate your brakes. As soon as you get up to speed, hold on to the drops. Put your weight all the way to the back axle and uh, let the bike flow. You don't have to pedal. Just keep it low. Lower center of gravity, just like F1 cars. The lower the center of gravity of a car, the faster it can go through turns safely. And if you encounter any traffic, you can brake immediately without having to go over the bars. Okay, so that was that. Done with all the hills. Now we're going to go back to Aqua Planet. Basically, uh, we call it back to the headquarters at the coffee shop. And uh, from NCC all the way back to Clark, we have um, beautiful, beautiful flat roads. This is where you can really take advantage of your high torque big gears and just keep it rolling the only final challenging climb is going up to the bridge again at the yellow bridge we got our friends taking photos it has become popular but as soon as you traverse that yellow bridge everything else going back to aqua planet is a sweeping flat asphalted road uh, we're just very lucky today there's not a lot of cars and uh, we have this road all the way for us and then as soon as we hit Pader. This is where the 
well the lead out exercise starts so for this section Tom takes charge of the lead out we just do these exercises just just because we like playing around so Pader is uh, a little bit of a long straight two to three uh, percent climb it's not a climb but when you go up to speed it starts to hurt So Tom brings me to the steepest part of the climb here at KCC. This is where it spikes up to 5% gradient. Once you get to the 5% gradient, this is where we try. Well, we just try to go up to speed and uh, have a really good workout. And it makes for a fun storytelling at the coffee shop when uh, you just talk about whatever happened on that particular sprint area. We're not really sprinters, but hey, Who's gonna stop you from playing and enjoying your bike, huh? especially with your friends? Always enjoy cycling with your friends. And that's that. First round done, we're gonna do the second round. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. This time we're gonna lead out tank. We're just gonna make a U-turn, go back to Pader, come back. And then this time we switch roles. Uh, the reason for that is uh, in an event, anyone can take the role of a lead out or a, or a fast finisher, not sprinter. Because there's no sprinter in our group. Huh? So uh, the collective effort of the group is what makes it strong, not the individual strength. So this is something that you can do together with your friends. Just ride together, play some simulations. Whew, wow, okay. So we're gonna make a U-turn, do it again. This time switch to rolls. Tank's gonna be uh, the protected person and sprint again. I mean, honestly, now, after riding with these mountain bike tires, you start to realize how those kids on mountain bikes can keep up with road bikers. I can tell you right now, it's like two or three times more effort just to go to the same speed. So, big salute to our uh, mountain biking friends who train on the road with road bikers. So maybe it just shows whatever your bike is, whatever your brand is, it's not with the brand, it's not how light your bike is, it's not how branded your clothing are. Maybe it's it all boils down to the rider, your discipline, commitment, and appreciating the bike that you are riding now. Remember? The best bike in the world is the bike that you own. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. See you on the next ride.